Christian people all over the world have been singing that hymn today because it tells in very simple words what Good Friday is about. It reminds us that nearly 2,000 years ago today, Jesus Christ died a cruel death outside Jerusalem, that this really happened as a fact of history. Christians believe that it was one of the most important things that ever happened, and I hope you will join us this afternoon in thinking again over what it still means today. First, will you listen to part of the story of the first Good Friday? We have four readers, one called Jonathan and three called Peter. There were two others with him, criminals who were being led away to execution. And when they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him there and the criminals with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. They divided his clothes among them by casting lots. The people stood looking on, and their rulers jeered at him. He saved others. Now let him save himself. If this is God's anointed, his chosen. The soldiers joined in the mockery and came forward, offering him their sour wine. If you are the king of the Jews, they said, save yourself. There was an inscription above his head which ran, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there with him taunted him. Are not you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered sharply, Have you no fear of God? You are under the same sentence as he. For us it is plain justice. We are paying the price for our misdeeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come to your throne. He answered, I tell you this, today you shall be with me in paradise. By now it was about midday, and there came a darkness over the whole land, which lasted until three in the afternoon. The sun was in eclipse, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And with these words, he died. The important thing about Good Friday is that if Jesus hadn't died as he did, and risen from the dead on Easter Day, there would never have been a Christian religion. Jesus would have been respected as a great teacher and healer, but no more than that. Because of what happened on the first Good Friday and Easter Day, Jesus has been worshipped as God ever since, because Christians believe, though this may be difficult to understand, that he was God, living on earth and sharing the ordinary experiences of our everyday life. But why did Jesus have to be crucified? Listen to the very heart of what Christians believe. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, that everyone who has faith in him may not die, but have eternal life. It was not to judge the world that God sent his Son into the world, but that through him the world might be saved.
that through him the world might be saved. Saved from what? I said just now that Jesus shared our everyday life, and he knew how every man, woman and child comes up against all sorts of things that are wrong, and how easily most of us give way to them. Jesus wanted to save us from doing wrong, not only because it brings great unhappiness to us and to others, but also because it cuts us off from God, makes a barrier. He wanted to bring us back to God, to give us life. Here are his own words. I have come that men may have life, and may have it in all its fullness. So he became man and lived a life of perfect goodness, showing us how God wants us to live. And as utter goodness is often hated by those who are afraid of it, he was put to death. And by his death and resurrection, Jesus broke down the barrier between God and ourselves. His enemies thought that was the end of him. But he rose again to life, and he is still alive in the hearts of those who love him. So the eternal life we have just heard about means two things. First, that the soul or the real part of a Christian never dies. And secondly, that with the help of God day by day, we needn't do all the wrong things that make us ashamed and hurt other people. Just before he died, Jesus told his friends what was going to happen, though at the time they didn't understand him. Now is the hour of judgment for this world. Now shall the prince of this world be driven out, and I shall draw all men to myself when I am lifted up from the earth. I shall draw all men to myself. Since that time he has drawn millions of people to himself, but not all. He draws us by his love, calling out love from us. Here's another hymn that's sung on Good Friday. Will you think very carefully of the words? They're full of meaning. Those aren't just beautiful words that don't mean anything. One of the first great Christians, St. Paul, understood so well what the death of Jesus meant that he spoke of himself like this. I have been crucified with Christ. The life I now live is not my life, but the life which Christ lives in me. And my present bodily life is lived by faith 
in the Son of God, who loved me and sacrificed himself for me. St. Paul said that his old life with its failures and wrongdoings had come to an end because of what Jesus had done. And not only had the wrong things been cut out of his life, but he enjoyed all sorts of new experiences which he'd never known before. And he said that this could be true for anyone who really believed in Jesus. If God is on our side, who is against us? He did not spare his own son, but surrendered him for us all. And with this gift, how can he fail to lavish upon us all he has to give? God didn't spare his own son. It was out of love that Jesus died on the cross. The world today is very short of real love. I believe this is because real love comes from God, and far too few people know God at all. Real love is the greatest force in the universe, and God's love, shown us in Jesus, is something that everyone needs and that never changes. Those who know its power can say with St. Paul, I am convinced that there is nothing in death or life, in the realm of spirits or superhuman powers, in the world as it is or the world as it shall be, in the forces of the universe, in heights or depths, nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the sadness of Good Friday gives way to the joy of Easter, full of confidence in the present and hope for the future. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We who have been reading and singing and talking to you call ourselves Christians. Not very good ones, perhaps, but people who realize what Jesus Christ has done for us and who are grateful to him and who are trying to live the kind of life that pleases him. We are going to say a prayer now, thanking our Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us and asking for his help. It's a very well-known prayer, first prayed more than 700 years ago by St. Richard of Chichester. Thanks, Thanks be to thee, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which thou hast given us, for all the pains and insults which thou hast borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. But to some of you, what we've been saying this afternoon may be quite new. You may be like some of those the early Christian leaders spoke to in the years just after the first Good Friday. Listen to what St. Paul wrote to some people who didn't really understand what Jesus had done. We come, therefore, as Christ's ambassadors. It is as if God were appealing to you through us. In Christ's name we implore you, be reconciled to God. But you may say, we are only children. What can we be expected to do about all this? Well, Jesus thought children were very important. Listen. They brought children for him to touch, and the disciples scolded them for it. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not try to stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And he put his arms round them, laid his hands upon them, and blessed them. No one is too young to give his life to Jesus. No one is too young to know his love and to be drawn to him. Jesus offers us his love. It's for us to take it. Now the boys of the choir are going to sing one of the loveliest parts of the St. Matthew Passion by J.S. Bach, Jesus, Saviour, I am thine. The words of this are a perfect prayer in which we can give our hearts and our lives to Jesus this Good Friday, knowing that he will accept them. And as long as we go on trusting him, we'll come to know more and more of his love each day. Here's Jonathan to read the words before they're sung. I do hope you'll make them your prayer and that you'll have a very happy Easter. Jesus, Saviour, I am thine. Come and dwell my heart within. All things else I count but loss. 
glory only in thy cross. Dearer than the world beside is the Saviour who hath died. 